So I just covered another small issue yesterday. Um, I was warming up uh, the engine and I had the heat turned off and I noticed coolant dripping on the driver's side. Um, and I kind of traced it down. It was coming out back here. Um, you can kind of see there's a hose down there that connects to that silver pipe. And that runs into the firewall. And then there's another hose that runs next to it. Um, so at first I thought maybe one of those hoses failed and then I kind of did a little bit more digging and I found that it was actually, there's a small electrical uh, pump there and it's like an auxiliary water pump that's used for uh, the cabin heat from what I understand. So when I had the heat turned off, um, I guess there might must be a small crack uh, in the, uh, in the pipe, pipe so, I mean in the pump somewhere. And so coolant was running down that uh, that uh, hose right there. So I phoned Mercedes, and uh, they they had one in stock, and they quoted me three hundred and fifty dollars for a replacement pump. So then I kind of did a little bit more digging around, and I saw that it's a Bosch pump. Um, so this is the Bosch part number, and the exact same pump. The only difference is when you buy it from Mercedes, it comes with the, the rubber grommet that sits on the outside for you to be able to uh, to mount it. There's a little bracket. So when that grommet just comes off. So I bought this pump at the, just at the auto parts store. I got it for a hundred bucks. So that's a pretty big markup that Mercedes charges for just putting a grommet on. Um, so I'm gonna just go ahead and um, get those hoses off and swap that little pump out. But I just wanted to kind of show you guys that um, with a little bit of digging, you can save a lot of money by buying the same parts, just not from the dealer. Uh, you just need to be able to figure out the, the correct part number. Okay, so here we've got the two pumps. This is the old one I removed, bit a bit tight, tight squeeze in there but you get the hoses off, you can get the connector off after. So now all we need to do is take this rubber and swap it onto the new one. And then it'll go right back in. Okay, so I've got the uh, the rubber grommet on the new pump. And it just kind of, it's there's a, a metal bracket and it slides into here and that secures the pump in place. And then we've got the two hoses that go on there with hose clamps and then we have a, an electrical connector on the end. So we'll get this thing in and uh, and then tighten it all up and then fire it up and hopefully no leaks. Okay, so the new pump is in. Got all the hose clamps tightened up and uh, no leaks. I just ran the, the engine for a little while. Um, the pump actually did turn on originally. I just, I turned the ignition on and um, just left the ignition on for a little bit and then the pump kicked on. Um, now I just shut the engine off and turn the ignition back on and the pump doesn't seem to be turning on. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what it's supposed to do, but it actually looks like this same pump is on this side too, on the side of the expansion tank. Um, same exact type of pump, but I think this pump is for the, uh, the heat exchanger, uh, for the turbo side. So, in any event, um, I'm glad I've got that leak resolved and uh, was able to do it at a reasonable cost. Um, I mean, $100 compared to $350 is, uh, is a big difference. So, anyways, hope this helped. Um, and uh, thanks for watching and like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.